Okay, I'm going to put into action straight away some BNF, and I'm going to teach you in reverse to the theory. So, what I'm going to do is, let's talk about variables. So, I'm going to do variables. I wish I had a stylus. This is a massive hint for you guys to buy me one. That's just variables. Now, a variable, or variables, can be, let's do variable, not variables, singular. A variable... can be defined by, and that's basically what this means, you can use for a variable a letter, or, now this is where it could get slightly confusing. And this is where recursion comes into it. It could be a variable with a digit. I'm going to do digit. Or, I wish I had more room. So imagine this is on the same line. Variable letter, and I'm going to give some examples of what this means in a second. But before I do, we need to define what a letter is, and we also need to define what a digit is. So I'm going to do digit first. This shouldn't actually be two crocodiles. That's a slightly different syntax. So I apologize. So let's do digit. And a digit it could be zero, it could be one, it could be two, it could be three, etc., 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 up until nine. Now, letters. Let's define those. Now, with letters, is equivalent to, let's see the equivalent to here. A, B, C, etc. up until Z but also or A because remember capitals are worth different values in the computer to lowercase all the way to Z so what we have is a variable which is made up of a letter or a letter and a digit so let's do some examples. You could do a variable, which is called A. That could be your variable. That is fine because we've seen in our rules that that matches. It could be a letter. Or it could be... Oh, I've lost my mouse. Ugh, I hate this is. A... One. So what we're doing is, this is where our recursion comes into it, we're using a variable, such as a letter, and followed by a digit. It could also be a b, because we're using a variable which is recursive or a letter together. It could be A, B, C, 1, because we've got a variable, which is recursive, and a digit. But it can't be is like the number 4 by itself. 
because it doesn't match our rules. It's not a letter of a number four. For it to be a variable to start off with, it needs to be a letter, so it can't meet that rule. And it can't meet this rule, because again, to be a variable to start off with, it's got to be a letter. Now let's add to this. So let's not talk about variables anymore. Let's talk about words. So a word can be defined by either a letter. You know what? I'm just going to write joint up. There you go. That's much quicker. Or a letter recursive word. You can do it the other way around as well. Word letter. So that basically means that if we did that, that is a letter. That's absolutely fine. And that also can count as a word because it allows us to have one letter could equal a word, such as the cat sat on a mat. But also, we could have lots of letters. Every time we add a new letter, it adds it to our word and it's recursive. So we could have A, P, P, L, E. Does that fit our rules? Yes. We know that a word is made up of a letter, we can use many letters, therefore we've got apple. So what we have is an exam question showing you what is called a syntax diagram. The syntax diagram is like a graphical version of BNF. So let's do the first one or two together and I'm going to let you, what I'll do is actually I'll pause it in between each challenge. So I want you to try and do variable to start off with. Now I'm not expecting you to get this right, but after I've done variable, the rest of them I'm hoping will make perfect sense. Pause the video, give it a go. Okay, so a variable is equivalent to a letter letter. How do we know this? Well, quite easily because of this diagram there. So it's quite limited. I want you to try and do a signed integer. I've lost my thing, there you go. So do a signed integer for me. Pause the video, give it a go. Okay, so what we have first is, if I drew this arrow, if we come to this plus sign. So that is the first thing I'm going to put down. Whoops, it's equivalent to plus our digit. I apologize for how slow this is. Or minus digit. So basically, by the shape, which goes, by the arrows which go down like this, it means that we can use all of them in some way as an option. So plus digit or minus digit, negative. Can you try operator? which is up here. Okay, so what you should have is something like this. That or that. And finally, the assignment statement, which is the biggest one. So we can see that we need variable. So I'm going to do V for variable. I can't be bothered to write the whole thing out equals. So the equals is mentioned, so we need to record it. A variable Remember these need to be in 
brackets as well. The only things that aren't going to be in brackets are the symbols, such as our operators, or such as the plus and the minus there. So variable operator itself, so over operator, and then signed integer. So S I. And there you go, this is the syntax rule. Uh-oh, we've been given a new challenge. Rewrite the BNF rule for a variable. So this is variable. So that it could be any number of letters. Now we looked at this at the beginning of the video. See if you can do this yourself first. Okay, so what you could do is a variable could be a letter just by itself at the minimum or it could be a variable recursive so we can make it letter which will mean that we can use a recursive amount of letters in our variable now this question is more to do with spot the patterns so we're given a pattern to begin with and we need to see whether or not it's valid or invalid and why so the first thing we've got is xy equals xy c4 and we're using the operator here so we know that if we are going to be doing a uh, assignment which is what this is this is assigning it says it in the question here and we can tell also by the format of it variable equals we know we're assigning so let's go to here do we have a variable yes we do this variable is made up of two letters that is fine because it says two letters here letter one letter two so we're good equals variable yes we've got a variable here the operator is correct that falls within our operators now we've also got c4 so is c4 assigned integer no it's not but assigned integer needs to have a plus or a minus digit so the reason why that this is invalid due to c4 be not being assigned integer boom next question this I want you to do the next two I'm going to pause the video and then I'll give you solutions to both Okay, so what we have is another assignment, ZY, that is fine, we're good, tick, equals, tick, ZY, tick, divide, tick, that's in our operators, now we've got 1 and 0, uh -uh. and it's uh -uh for a number of reasons, number 1 is it's not assigned integer, again, so we can put, invalid due to one zero not being a signed integer but I wonder how many of you noticed any other little problems with this well let's have a look number one this is using a one and it's using a zero this zero does not appear in our digits therefore we can't use it. Now you might say, hang on a minute, what about four? Four does appear. I just chopped up the question <laughs> chopped out the question. It goes up to five. 
So zero doesn't appear, so we also can say as another point invalid as zero is not an accepted digit. But there's another problem. Let's have a look a little bit more detail of signed integer. Signed integer needs to have a plus or minus and then a single digit. This has two digits, therefore it is not a signed integer again. So invalid as signed integer needs one digit maximum. This gives us two. And the final question, let's have a look. Why, why? We're good. Uh -uh. This is not equals, so not good. Good, good, good. It's signed, but six is not in our range, so we've got two issues we can mention. We can mention the very fact that uh, the equals is incorrect. Six is not a valid digit. And there we go.